Welcome back friends. In this video we will be talking about the organs of the immune system. Especially we will be talking about the organs uh, where uh, our all the immune cells uh, or killer cells or sometimes helper cells that we have talked before that the lymphocytes and also other types of myelite progenitor cells will develop and and uh, about those 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 homes and the training centers where all of them are trained for the purpose of uh, serving our body when the pathogen attacks us okay so let us look at it now uh, if we look at the organs of the immune system we can divide it into two parts one is the primary organ system another one is the secondary organ now the primary organs are the most important parts so let me take a color okay now the primary organs uh, are uh, huge organs or larger organs where we are having most of our immune defense uh, soldiers to be produced and those organs are thymus and bone marrow. These two regions are the primary organ of the immune response or primary immune organ in our body. Now thymus uh, will be seeing each of these organs and the architecture of the organ in later videos, uh, in later uh, slides sorry. Now secondary organs are not that much important, they are not chief organs, rather they are helping to establish uh, the total immune response inside our body. So they are helping these primary organs for establishing the function. So these are called the secondary organs like lymph nodes, we are having spleen, mucous and also mucous and lymphoid tissues and different associated lymphoid tissues. Now these tissues they are not exactly lymph uh, among the lymphatics but this is a coat of mucus having the lymphoid tissue and they are called mucus associated lymphoid tissue okay and we are having different type of lymphoid associated tissues uh, associated lymphoid tissues like gut associated lymphoid tissue then we are having uh, so it will be called GALT we are having <coughs> different regions okay so these lymph nodes and spleen and these organs, these are the secondary organs, they are helping thymus and bone marrow for producing all the immune response soldiers to protect our body. Let us first talk about the morphology of thymus. Now you can find here the thymus, <coughs> excuse me, thymus present here uh, in between uh, this place uh, right behind uh, our heart in between the two lungs this is the organ thymus okay now this thymus is, ha is having the structure like that now in this structure we can find there is a coating region outside which is called the capsule and all we are also having a uh, different segmentation inside uh, them okay now if we zoom into a particular segmentation here we can see this particular segmentation we will see different established or distribution of cells now in this particular tissue we can find a, a, a very important architecture and the architecture is that we are making a network with the help of two different kinds of cells especially they are called the epithelial cells okay so they are called the epithelial cells in both the type okay but this epithelial cell depending upon the presence will be called cortical epithelial cell and medullary epithelial cell because at the terminal part of this uh, or the part which is uh, pretty close to capsule is called the cortex of this thymus or cortex so in this cortex part the epithelial cells are present they are called the cortical epithelial cells and those which are away from the capsule and at the central region of the thymus uh, cross section uh, it is called the medulla region. So the epithelial cell presence there are called the medullary epithelial cells. Both of the cells can be visualized in this picture pretty clearly. Cortical epithelial cells are colored in blue. Medullary epithelial cells colored in orange or red, whatever. Now we can see in the cortical epithelial cells and also in the medullary epithelial cells, the cells are looking like dendritic cells. So they hold on to itself, they hold on to each other to make a, a network, to make a mesh-like network. And this network mm, will contain <coughs> several gaps, so several regions. And these regions will be, uh, regions are for the attachment of other cells like macrophages, dendritic cells, and Hessel's uh, corpuscles and all these different types of cells. Okay, now in case of cortical epithelial cells, we are having much more tighter arrangement of uh, these epithelial cells. 
and in case of medullary epithelial junction we are having uh, the cells which are less less tightly packed okay now in case of cortical epithelial cell in the middle uh, portion of this cortical epithelial cells we are having small uh, blue color cell as you can see here they are called the thymocyte or <clears throat> this thymocyte cells are uh, a pluripotent kind of cell so they can give rise to different uh, different thymus associated cells like t cells remember so they can give rise to t cells Okay, so on the other hand, in medullary epithelial cell, they are also making the network, on, and, and in between them, there are gaps, and this gap, they are having both uh, different types of cells like macrophages and also dendritic cells. Now, these dendritic cells are macrophages, both of them are antigen presenting cells. We have discussed them about them in, in our previous discussions. Now, what they can do, they can engulf bacterial cells, they can chop the chop this pathogen, whatever bacterial virus or whatever it is, and they can. Uh, hold on to this <coughs> body part of the pathogen and can and show up to other members of their family okay for the proper detection and proper <coughs> uh, antagonistic mechanism against this pathogen okay so this is the structure of uh, the thymus now let us move on to the next slide so if you look at this case uh, that this thymus Sorry. So here you can find that the thymus uh, and this this epithelial cells they arrange themselves in such a way that sorry, let me take the color. Okay, let us go back. Okay. Now here you can find that uh, this this epithelial cells and these are the smaller macrophages or other types of cells. So it's it's making a 3D network of cells and in between them we are having the cells which are moving around. Okay. Now let us talk about the bone marrow. Now here uh, in this picture, this is not much saying about bone marrow structure, but we can find structure in this particular region. So bone marrow is a, actually <coughs> this region you can find here. So this is not exactly the middle bone portion because this is the portion from uh, where we are find we can find lot of different types of cells which are going to be produced inside the bone marrow. So bone marrow is this portion. It is yellow and red things are combined with each other so this is the region of bone marrow you can find this this layer of cells you can we can see this is the layer of cells okay so you can uh, imagine what part of the bone marrow is uh, zoomed in this pretty picture okay now again uh, uh, like the thymus the, in this bone marrow cells also there are cells uh, dendritic cells <coughs> or dendron shaped cells which are holding their hands to make a network now here those cells which are making the network are called stromal cells. Uh, they are in green color in this picture and in between this network there are smaller regions or gaps. Inside the gaps there are other cells. For example cells like this hematopoietic stem cell. Now this hematopoietic stem cells is a kind of uh, multipotent stem cells. Okay so this multipotent stem cells can give a rise to uh, itself and also it can give rise to variety of cells for example lymphoid progenitor cell as well as myeloid progenitor cell in case of thigh <coughs> in case of thymus we only see the lymphoid progenitor but bone marrow is pretty much complex it can give rise to both lymphoid progenitor as well as myeloid progenitor from the lymphoid progenitor it can produce natural killer cell T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte all of them are lymphocyte in nature but on the other hand, from the myeloid progenitor cell, it can produce all the other granulocytes like neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, and on the other hand, platelets and also the red blood cell, which consists of most of the part of our uh, body among the cells uh, of our blood. Okay, okay. So <clears throat> this is about the hematopoietic stem cells. We can also have uh, osteoblast cells. So it is a pre-osteoblast because it is not matured yet. Then the pre-osteoblast get matured to produce the osteoblast cells. Now osteoblast cells will produce the bone. We will make the bone hardened and strong. Okay. We also have other smaller cells which can produce a skeletal muscle cell and also hematocyte stem cells. Okay. So these are the different types of cells that can be produced from the bone marrow. Now bone marrow is a larger player because it is giving rise to a variety of different types of cells irrespective of it is myeloid and uh, both uh, lymphoid progenitor. Okay. 
Now let us talk about a little bit about the lymphatic system. Now the lymphatic system is a totally different system irrespective of the blood circulation system. So you must know this concept that this is not the blood circulation system. In the lymphatic system, blood is not circulating as a lymph. Lymph is a different thing. It is not blood. blood <coughs> red blood cells are excluded. Uh, we are having so what we are having we are having other members of the blood so we are having the serum plus we are having the b cells and t cells within us so it is called the lymph okay so so this is the lymph and lymph uh, is transported via the lymph uh, capillaries and then this lymph capillaries can go and meet into larger gland like structure which are called the lymph nodes okay so these are the things so lymph lymph capillaries and lymph node we need to mm, think about this okay so lymph lymph capillaries and lymph node now lymph is made up with as i have told you before that the blood uh, serum so it is excluding all the red, red blood cell part plus it is having uh, it is having the blood serum and serum plus uh, the T and B lymphocyte cells, so the white blood cells, so leukocytes present there. Now, <coughs> what is uh, the actual flow of this lymphatic or actual system of lymphatic? Now if we look at here from the arteriole to the venule region, blood pressure is changing. In the arteries, blood pressures are highest, in the venules, blood pressure are the lowest. In the large venules, blood pressure are lowest. Now here you can find the arteriole because we are not dealing with arteries it was larger so arteriole is much more smaller than arteries. The arterioles are dividing into small branches and also venules divide into small branches they will meet into a particular point what you have called blood capillaries. Remember what you mean by blood capillaries so let me change the color here it will be required. Okay. So blood capillaries are there both we are having arteriole and we are having venule. So both of them, where they meet together in a very small, <coughs> tiny uh, mesh of network, it is called the blood capillaries. Now these blood capillaries are so small that they, that the nutrients can diffuse through these blood capillaries to the extracellular space where all the cells reside. As you can see in this picture, these cells can re easily uptake those nutrients and also they can give their... Uh, Cell, cell extra cell, they can give their uh, bad materials or metabolites after uh, so so the byproducts metabolic byproducts and all these things back to this uh, blood capillary so that this this bad materials can easily be transported through the venules okay so vein contains the bad things right so vein will contain all the uh, rest or or, <coughs> or remaining product of a cell and artery provides them arterial provides them essential parts so this is the actual thing which is happening in the blood capillaries all all the time okay but lymph is interfering with this process so lymph entered into this blood capillary system now what happens here from this blood capillary system uh, some amount of a fluid can enter into this lymph okay so as uh, this this uh, from the blood capillaries food and all the materials are moving outside red blood cells cannot move other cells cannot move outside but what can move is uh, those serum with the nutrients those serum with the nutrients can easily move outside the extracellular space and they can easily enter to this uh, lymph uh, lymph vessels or lymph capillaries right <coughs> sorry how because at this in this proposition of uh, <coughs> extracellular space the pressure is higher than the pressure that resides in the lymph capillaries. So we know that always it's a tendency for moving the liquids from the higher pressure region to the lower pressure region. So what happens the, the fluid that came out from the blood capillaries to the extracellular space as they are having the higher pressure they can easily enter into uh, this uh, lymph capillaries via the diffusion process and then they will enter into it and can move through this lymph capillaries. Okay, so if we look at the <coughs> lymphokinetic motion or the using the pressure gradient, what we can find that blood pressures are higher in the capillaries. Here you can see this is the highest pressure in the capillaries because capillaries are uh, are very very tiny. They are having a less uh, 
area they are having a less volume region so very less area but uh, the um, the volume of the blood remains the same so it creates higher pressure after that it is having interstitial fluid it is also high pressure region from then it can easily enter to the lymph capillaries and lymph veins then lymph ducts and finally large veins okay again through all this process it will be co coming back to the venue remember so the the, uh, the all of this <coughs> serum and uh, blood uh, liquid which entered into these uh, lymph capillaries after a long time when it passes through the lymph veins lymph ducts and finally it will be returned to the to these venues okay so this is a process of circulation throughout the place but still remember one thing that when uh, this this liquid is entering into these lymph capillaries it does not contain any amount of red blood cell okay we can see the highest pressure value for blood capillary so anything at the downstream process uh, will have an advantage of gaining the liquid from the upstream one because upstream one will have the highest pressure higher pressure than the downstream one okay if you look at the different lymph nodes remember i have talked before about lymph nodes because this is not only lymph capillaries but also lymph capillaries will go and attach to a particular joint position joint region which is having uh, larger structures called the lymph nodes in this lymph node what we are having we are having different follicles now <coughs> two types of follicles are primary and secondary primary follicles are sitting there for longer time so, and after some time when primary follicle cells start to mature uh, they will produce a secondary follicle now the secondary follicle as you can see here it contains small small cells okay now the cells when they get they get matured they will be transferred they will be transferred from this lymphatic system through the vessels lymph vessels into the lymphatic system now these cells these secondary follicle cells are very important to, for the detection of different pathogens that enter into our body okay now when they find a particular type of pathogen they just come and sit onto this lymph node again and show all the other cells in the lymph node that look what i've got and then all of the cells will become alerted and they will start producing uh, some machineries to go against the pathogen infection okay so this is the thing which is going on all the time here so you can find here that this is the tissue space and this is the lymph capillaries and uh, liquids start to enter into these lymph capillaries then it will it will come here into the lymph node then all these things will be going on now germinal center is a place where this lymph secondary follicle cells start to grow and become mature cells if we if we zoom into a uh, lymph node structure what you can find again it is divided into three different parts one is the cortex part mainly two different parts one is the cortex which is the surrounding region outside another one is the medulla which is the internal region now in between this cortex and medulla there is another region which is called the paracortex but we don't need to bother about this paracortex much more okay now what happens here in this case <coughs> in the cortex region there are uh, the places for the development of lympho lymphocytes like B lymphocytes okay now this region is called uh, the primary lymphoid follicle and it is also called the germinal center now the germinal center is a place in, uh, which is surrounded by the primary lymphoid follicles where B cells start to mature okay now when B cells start to mature it becomes secondary uh, lymphoid system okay so so here you can find that this is a uh, circular region so it's a ring is formed this ring is uh, by the primary lymphoid follicle okay and in between or inside the ring there is a gap space which is called the germinal center now this germinal center will eventually start to have a mature cell the cells which are getting mature actually those cells are the primary lymphoid follicle from the primary lymphoid follicle those cells start to grow and mature and finally when they produce the B cells and they reside in this germinal center we call them the B lymphocyte cells as you can see so it's a maturation of the stages that are given here so you can find here cells start to come here from the afferent lymph vessels like that and they will come and go in, inside uh, the region inside here <coughs> two direction it is given one direction is that they can easily enter into this germinal center for the maturation or they can move here as you can see as I am drawing this as they can move here and go to and reside into this lymph node for longer period of time 
it depends upon the type of cell we are dealing with that whether they are going to be the mature uh, uh, mature B lymphocyte cell uh, or uh, they are going to reside onto the lymph node for a longer time. Now B cells and T cells both of the cells are of two different types one is a normal type of cell another one is memory cell. So if you look at the B cells which is a general cell or normal cell they can go and reside into this germinal center region <coughs> for the maturation after the maturation they will leave from this place okay but if you are dealing with the cells B cells which are memory cells then they must go and sit onto uh, some region of this lymph node for longer period of time because memory cells are having the work for having the memory for a particular pathogen infection that if in future that pathogen re-enters the body they can fight against the infection right so here again so this is how <coughs> the cells start to mature and these are the regions so when they need to to be removed from this uh, lymph nodes what they can do they can go easily from the efferent lymphatic vessel so remember here there is a place for entering so this is the place for entering and this is the place for exit okay so this is a <coughs> place for entering this is the place for exit so this is not a single way system it's a two way system so you can also find this this valves here you can also see this these are the valves now these valves are present and they can be opened into only one direction so no cell can enter into this lymph node via this process you cannot enter here via this this direction only way of entering into this lymph node is via this afferent lymphatics which are larger and present in higher amounts uh, comparatively uh, to this efferent vessels because efferent vessels are less uh, present in less amount now in each of these lymph nodes we are having this <coughs> capillary and venule present here like that okay so both of them they are not blood vein or blood capillary they are lymphatic artery and lymphatic veins remember again according to the name lymphatic artery means they are carrying cells lymphatic veins when they are carrying uh, they, are, uh, they are making them out of this lymph lymphatic system okay this is how the whole process is organized the whole morphology is organized now for example if I give a real-time example of how or what happens to this lymphoid uh, tissue and lymph nodes when a pathogen enters into our body it can give you a clear understanding for example say this is a bacterium which can come and attach to uh, our <coughs> epithelial cell then what will happen local infection can be can cause so this is the infection injury through this injury sorry so these injury cells start to enter and invade into our tissue now where we are having the <coughs> killer cells like macrophages and dendritic cells the antigen presenting cells they can come these are the phagocytic cells remember so they can come and engulf bacteria they can chop up the bacteria and can hold on to a piece of other bacterial sample onto their surface now they need to show this to other members right so they will come and invading through the efferent tube of the lymph node uh, lymphatic system they, they will come to the lymph node into the germinal center at this part we are having all the cells B cells and our cells are waiting there so they will show to all of these premature B cells that look what I have what I've got, got right these are the bacteria so we need to design something which can go against this bacterial pathogen so those cells start to produce the important machinery to go against those bacterial pathogen that are shown by these uh, dendritic cells and macrophages okay <clears throat> so these cells will start to produce uh, so B cells will start to mature and after some time those B cells will be matured into called large plasma cells now these plasma cells are pretty large and they will produce a lot of protein molecules called antibodies or immunoglobulin remember uh, I have talked it before they can produce Ig or immunoglobulin or what is called the antibody that means they can go against the antigen or a piece of bacterial pathogen okay so again when they are produced for a particular <coughs> sensitive antibody against that pathogen which enters they will leave through the efferent system and finally they will reach into the tissue where the pathogen invaded now there they will sit onto there I can release all those uh, all those immunoglobulin or another thing can happen they can sit onto this lymph node and they can release their weapons weapons like immunoglobulin so their weapons will will be moved from through this uh, efferent uh, lining and it can go to the <coughs> invaded invading tissue 
and it can go and hunt all those bacteria and kill all those bacteria in a moment. Okay, so this is how whole system can work. Okay, and the second part of the discussion, what I have called that the, the production of the antibody and killing it is called the adaptive immune system. Because in this case, we need to rely upon both of the cases, like uh, production of antibodies. But in pre uh, there will be another mode of immune system where we, we only rely on cells like T lymphocytes and cytotoxic cells and natural killer cell to kill cells. It will be called the cellular mode. But this mode is called the humoral mode of the immune response. Okay, so this is how the whole process work surrounding this lymph node. Okay, so there is another <coughs> many round of defense that can be carried out against the infection or invading organism, but uh, we, we, are, we, we haven't talked about them because we don't need to uh, tell it in, uh, according to the feature of this lymph nodes. But lymph node is in the part of the detection and the production of this. Okay, so that's why I've, I've shared it with you. So now this is another secondary uh, lymphatic system. It is called a spleen. Now spleen is having two structures. Like again, it is having a capsule, and then it is having a medulla region like that. Okay. Now this is having two different parts. One is a red pulp, and one is the germinal center and the middle region, okay, or white pulp. In the white pulp region, it is having two different regions, primary follicle and secondary follicle. Now again, primary follicle means a small cell surrounding and making a center. The center will be called the germinal center. So the, this, all of these things remain the same. So primary <coughs> follicle surrounding small cells and it will produce a center, which is germinal center. In this germinal center, cells start to mature. Cells like B cells, T cells start to, in this case, B uh, cells start to mature and those cells can be they are matured into they can be matured into the plasma cells and they can put start producing antibodies remember we have talked before about the other lymph nodes okay but in this case we are having artery and venules because this is also a part of our blood vessel system so that's why we can find a red pulp region there because uh, blood a uh, red blood cells that is that is coming out through these arteries can go to this uh, peripheral region this region will fill with uh, those those those, uh, those red blood cells that's why they are called a red pulp region it will look like much more red but all the other region this this middle region will look much much less red so that's why we call the white pulp but this, believe me this is not actually white okay so anyways <coughs> the basic uh, construction remains the same so it is having a primary follicle inside there. It is having germinal center. In the germinal center, we will have the maturation uh, of the B cells into the plasma cells, and they can produce antibodies to fight against infections. But the exception about the spleen with other lymph nodes is that spleen is much more bigger, and it is ha having a vein and artery system. Okay, and the vein artery distribution there is called the helium, as you can see in these cases. Okay, <coughs> and it is having two different regions: red pulp and white pulp according so uh, I hope this is the end of uh, the different organs we have talked about I hope this is helping me thank you